Okay, everybody. So this is one of your uh, video lectures, one of your other video lectures for this week. Um, and again, as we are looking here into week four, we're going to talk about the alto and tenor clefs. All right, so I've got it here, but let's talk a little bit about it. You guys have learned how to read treble and bass, and of course you're still learning how to, to you know navigate through those pitches. But the um, well-rounded musician understands that we have other kinds of clefs. And two of the other kind of common clefs are called alto and tenor clefs, and they, they look like this. Okay. Now, a lot of times I'll have students say, well, uh, when would you ever use those things? Uh, oh, believe me, they're used quite often. And for anybody who's going to be going into, especially music education, uh, you will come across these because other orchestral instruments like the cello, viola bassoon, and trombone do read in these clefs. So, basically, what this used to be, you know how the, the treble clef used to be a fancy G, Bass clef used to be a fancy F. This is a fancy C. Way back in the day it started as a C. Now these look the same, but the difference is this intersection, this middle of the C, if you will, is on this third line. And over here in the tenor clef, it's on the fourth line. What this is indicating is that this is C. This is C. But it's not just any C. This happens to be C4. So this is specifically the sound of middle C on the piano. And this is the sound of middle C on the piano. Um, almost every viola player I know reads an alto clef. Even school viola players read this. Um, bassoons can read tenor clef or alto clef. And basically what it does is by using this these clefs you can eliminate ledger lines so let's say uh, an orchestral uh, trombone player you know reading some music it, if he's looking at this note this is an F for uh, say a, an orchestra trombone player amongst other things if he was reading this in bass clef that would be two ledger lines and up and if these get if I go even one higher I've got to deal with a lot of ledger lines. So this eliminates the use of having of somebody having to read, you know, two, three, four ledger lines. It kind of brings everything down so it keeps everybody in the staff here. So one of the assignments you're going to have this week is on tone savvy, and you're going to identify the alto and tenor. Now I'm not going to do it like I've done with the uh, treble and bass where I give you the pace notes. I'll give you a little ch a little time to figure it out. But the most important thing you can remember is that that intersection, that is C. If you know this is C, you can count up or down as long as you know how to count up the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or count backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. So let's do a little bit of this. This is what you've got. Homework, homework wise. So uh, you will continue to identify treble and bass. You're just still going to practice, still going to practice that stuff. And this time, let's uh, let's go alto. We're going to take out any ledger lines. All right, and here we go. What is this note? All right now, if you were just thinking treble clef, you'd say that's an F. If you were reading bass clef, that would be an A. But it's not. This is alto clef. All right, well, let's figure it out. This is C. If this is C, count backwards. C. Now this space is B. This line is A which means this must be G. All right, here's C. If this is C, if this line is C, 
This space is D, C, D, which means this is E. Now, unlike the treble or bass clef, where we learned all those cool things like every good bird does fly, face, all cows eat grass, etc., etc., there really isn't any set of um, little sentences you can give these. And, and I guess there's a couple of reasons. One, you know, you if you give a, a set of sentences to these lines and spaces, and then you give a set of sentences to the tenor clef lines and spaces, that, that's a lot of work. Okay, a lot of things to memorize. It's kind of just better for these guys <laughs> that you understand that this is C, and just go up or down. Go let go backwards. C, B, A, G, F. There you go. Now again, let's say you're you're a viola player, or any other instrument that's going to be playing this. As you learn your music, eventually, you don't have to do that. Eventually, you just see that and you recognize that that's an F. Okay, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, now let's also talk about specific octave designation. Okay, if this is a C4, this is middle C right here, middle C, if that's C4, then that must be specifically D4. That's the D just above the middle C. Okay, C, D. What's that? That's C, specifically middle C, C4. Okay, so that's the alto clef. Now let's look at the tenor clef. Remember, guys, you can always practice these. Tenor. Now this is middle C. All right, just go back. C, B, A, G, F, E, D. That's middle C. Now, if this was a, a trombone part, like in an orchestra or a bassoon part, and it was bass clef, the trombonist would be reading middle C, but the first ledger line. Look, look, look at that. It's it's really taking away having to use all those ledger lines. As the note gets higher in bass clef, uh, the trombone players and the bassoon players would have to read quite a few ledger lines that they're going to play in the upper register. This way, everything stays in the staff. So this is middle C. C, D, E. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll just start seeing. You just start seeing where they are. Let me slow it down a bit. C, go backwards. B. C B A, and again, the more you practice the quicker you're going to get at this. And if you can get to the point where you can just read your clefts, tenor, alto, treble, bass, it just makes you that uh, better a musician. So that's the uh, lecture, the video lecture for the, the two clefts, and you'll have that in your homework. All right, C continue on, everybody.